EOS block producers have a very large problem on their hands now that EOS adoption is rising. We're going to talk about that today, how the growing size of EOS is affecting the block producers and that more and more block producers are dropping out of this game. That is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to go through the pro what the problem is and then I'm also going to go through what the solutions are to this problem because I don't think this is going to take down EOS in any way. This is just one problem along the way that they will have to resolve. But before I do that, I of course want to remind you to go to academy.ivanontech.com. We are soon releasing our algorithmic trading course where you'll be able to build your own trading systems, trade cryptos on some of the most popular exchanges out there and build your own trading strategies. Very, very cool. Check that out in the link in the description or go to academy.ivanontech.com and check that out. I would love to see you there. With that being said, the problem that we're going to discuss today is the growing size of the EOS blockchain. And uh, the EOS blockchain today stands at around 4 terabytes and has grown incredibly quickly now that the popularity of EOS has actually risen. And we have a lot of transactions now on EOS with all of these dApps that now are shifting from Ethereum to EOS. So that's all good news, of course, if you uh, are an EOS holder that more and more dApps are now running on EOS. Fantastic. But that comes with a problem because the EOS block time is very quick, 500 milliseconds, and their transactions per second is also very, very quick. The problem with that or the drawback of that is that the blockchain grows incredibly quickly. So as I said, we're now up to four terabytes of you know, the size of the entire blockchain. And if you compare that to Bitcoin, which has now after 10 years, a 200 gigabyte blockchain size and Ethereum after a few years has uh, 140 gigs, 140 gig blockchain size. And of course, those are projects that have been around longer and have has, still has a smaller blockchain size. So what sort of issues is this causing? Well, it becomes very difficult if you are a block producer to store this entire blockchain. And uh, now only, I think, five block producers are currently, at least when I'm making this video, storing the full history. That means they are what we call a full history node. That means that you can query those nodes, that block producer, for any transaction or any block that lies back in time, all the way back to the Genesis block. Most block producers, apart from these, uh, these five, store only the recent history of the blockchain, which is of course the most popular query. Almost, uh, almost everyone queries the latest transactions because that is what is most relevant. But sometimes people need to get the history far back into the history and then people need a full history node. So why aren't more people running full history nodes? And what is the issue with having so few? Well, people don't run full history nodes because it is growingly expensive. If you need four terabytes of uh, RAM in order to store the entire blockchain, that is incredibly expensive. And also if you're going to index this entire thing so that it is indexable and searchable, then it becomes even more expensive. And uh, that is a problem with incentives, of course, that these uh, block producers simply can't compete with these other block producers that simply choose to store a smaller part of the blockchain. It becomes too expensive. And the problem with having so few of these full history nodes is, of course, that if you have dApps that rely upon the full history of EOS, then those dApps can quite easily be shut down or censored or just simply stop working. And that is because they, most of the dApps that require full history, they only query one block producer because the APIs can be different, so it's kind of difficult to query multiple ones. So they query uh, usually only one. And then if that specific block producers producer go down, then there's no way for them to quickly get the full history of the blockchain. You'll need to integrate to another API. And the cost for those block producers that are left, in one, if one more leave, then the cost for those other block producers will be even higher because they will give an even higher share of the traffic. So... This is a huge problem and the blockchain is growing exponentially right now. So if the popularity of EOS keeps rising like it does right now, 
the size is going to get out of control. So how are we going to solve it? Because if we reach a point in you know two years time when the blockchain might be a hundred terabytes in size, that will be there probably won't be any nodes left to store it unless we make some changes. And those changes that I think we'll see are divided into two categories. There can be technical solutions to this problem where you find a solution maybe with sharding where different uh, block producers store different parts of the history and then you need some way of coordinating. So when people request different parts of the blockchain, they query different block producers. And that might be one solution. It's probably difficult to implement, but not impossible. I mean, Ethereum is working on sharding, so probably EOS can, uh, can work on that as well. The other part of the solution is an incentive solution, meaning that EOS can find a way to incentivize people to hold the full history node, um, to, to more, having more BPs hold the full history node by, for example, um, having people pay more for that storage or any other type of incentive structure. There is also a possibility that um, you could find technical solutions that reduces the amount of storage that you actually need in order to store this full history. You could find other database solutions. Maybe you could do MongoDB uh, solution. Maybe you could come, come up with some compression algorithm that you can use so that it doesn't take up so much space. I'm not an expert on building these solutions, but I know that there are a lot of competent people in, um, in this space. And Dan Lerma's take on this is that if the market wants full history, they they need to show it and they need to pay you know through the free and open market for that full history so if the market wants full history nodes then there will be full history nodes if they don't there won't be any full history nodes and i like the idea of free and open markets but there, there is also a drawback to having one or two full history nodes if you actually want a censorship resistant blockchain with that being said what do you guys think i know that i have a lot of EOS lovers, EOS holders, EOS programmers in my audience. So what do you think? Do you think this is a problem that we should care about? Do you think that EOS will solve it? And how should they solve it? Or do we even need full history notes? I would love to hear your comments in the comment section below. And as always, if you dislike this video for any reason, you can hit the dislike button. But if you liked it, make sure to hit the like button and get subscribed and hit that bell button as well so that you get notified the next time I upload a video. With that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.